It's a kind of national trademark or disease, the American desire to be at the top. A car rental company apologizes for not being number one. It drives them crazy, they say, so they'll try harder. Television called us wait breathlessly to see who was number one last week. Coca-Cola is number one and Pepsi can't stand it. Movie stars are ranked from one to ten. And presidents defending the Pentagon budget pledge the United States will never be number two. This is a story about a man who is maybe less neurotic about being number one than others in his profession, but still feels vaguely cheated because he tries harder and has come close, but has never made it. Is he feeling frustrated? Not really. You know, I sometimes think it's more fun than just, you know, the idea, well, when are we going to get it? Because well, when we get it, what do you have? You've got something that says you're number one, and then it's a question of repeating it and so forth. But it would be nice to, to, to get to be number one once, I'm, I'm sure of that. He is Joe Paterno, who earns his living directing the activities of a half a hundred young men of substantial size and agility, known collectively as the Nittany Lions, the Penn State football team. Number one in the weekly rating since November, but never yet number one for a season. There is no Super Bowl in college football, so winning a national championship depends on how a team rates in the polls, won by sports writers, won by coaches. Occasionally, other outside influences intervene. You know, I was fighting with President Nixon in 69 before it became fashionable, I think. <laughs> before CBS was fighting with him. The year he named Texas as number That's one. That's right, he picked Texas down here to the Arkansas-Texas game. And we had won, we had gone through 30 games in a row without a defeat. And it kind of irritated me to see the President of the United States get in the, in the poll business. And, uh, but I think we've had some great teams and had just as much right to be number one as anybody else. This year, the Penn State campus has a bad case of number one fever. Because tomorrow, Paterno takes his unbeaten Nittany Lions into the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans to play Alabama. If Penn State wins, Paterno will finally have his number one. Paterno is a normally mild and medium-sized man of 51 who has coached at only one school and whose team since he became head coach have won 83% of the time. Ranked in the top 10 for 10 out of the last 13 years. Featured in 11 bowl games. Winners in the regular season 123 times. Losers only 24 times. Hey, John Waterwood. A better coaching record than Bear Bryant at Alabama or winsome Woody Hayes at Ohio State. But in spite of these statistics, or maybe because of them, Paterno insists football should be fun for the players and that a loss is not a disaster. A lot of people have heard the slogan in football, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Is that the way you coach? No, not really. I think winning's all part of the game, and if you're not trying to win, there's no sense playing it. I mean, that's why we keep score, obviously. Uh, but I can't get excited about losing a football game. We lose, we lose. Joe Paterno has an interesting and maybe revolutionary idea. College football players should be large and talented students who like to play football, not large and talented football players who also go to college. He thinks a college coach should be an educator, and he's proud that 94% of his football scholarship players have won degrees at Penn State. You can frequently see Paterno's players studying in the locker room. I think if you bring a kid into college and you don't think he can do the work and he doesn't graduate, you've really exploited him. He'll, he'll fill a stadium with 77,000 people at 10 bucks a head, and uh, he's got a grant and aid that's maybe worth 2,500 bucks a year. I think if he doesn't get his education and turn him out without that, you've exploited him. But if he comes and gets an education, gets an opportunity to develop the way he should, like other young people had, and would not have had that opportunity except for football grant and aid, then I think he's really got a good deal and it's a good situation. Is the idea that your players should be students, too, uh, part of the reason you don't have athletic dormitories? Absolutely. I think if, if a kid gets locked into an athletic dormitory, gets locked into a football situation, and he doesn't really have a chance to get to meet some other people on the campus, I've often felt that the best people on the campus are on our squad. And I think they ought to have an influence on other people as well as other people having an influence on them. You know, there's, no, there's nothing at all that, to impede you from really finding out what the other guy thinks and arguing about religion, economics, whatever it may be. And that, to me, was the best fun I had in college. And I wouldn't want to deprive my kids of that and our squad of that. I think that they, they should have that. And I, I think an athletic dormitory really is, doesn't belong in an educational institution. <laughs>
It's impossible to tell a football story without occasionally lapsing into a foreign language. The fact is, there is simply no way to say zig out or post pattern or shotgun in normal speech. So bear with me. Sport speak is not my mother tongue, and I am as uncomfortable speaking it as Howard Gosell would be speaking English. Penn State plays from the eye, but switches to a full house backfield and sometimes to a three wide or a wing tee with a man in motion. It does not use the veer or wishbone. On defense, the Nittany Lions play a 3-5, which is really a 5-3, but sometimes just to a 4-4 with a hero. Confused? Perhaps this little tidbit from a coach's meeting will clear things up. Okay, we'll get the throw back to you. And then I thought if you have time, make sure we work on the 8-8 out and the 70 out with the three wide outs. Because they're again in there prevented. They're strictly, uh, I've seen 4-4-3. Four, four, Is that what you guys have seen? Paterno's varied offensive and defensive formations may be part of the reason why there are 26 former Penn State players in the NFL right now. Hey, make a switch, defense! Paterno is both liked and respected by his players. He may be the best football coach in the country. He almost certainly is the best loved college coach since Newt Rockman. He's a genuine nice guy. Let's concentrate! Come back in the huddle! Let's go! Let's go! Well, most of the time. But during this week of practice, before the homecoming game against Syracuse, Paterno felt the team was not concentrating. You know, I say many times, and the kids hear me say it, and they, and a thousand times a year, you either get better or you get worse. You can't stay in one place. You can't be the same football team next week you were last week, just like you can't be the same person. At the weekly football luncheon with faculty, alumni, and just plain fans, the coach explained why he was upset about the practice sessions. And if they go out to practice and they don't practice trying to get better, right, they get some bad habits, they get a little bit sloppy, they don't concentrate, and you come off the field actually not as good as you were when you went on it. And you've wasted all that energy, all that time, and what do you got? You're a poor football team. Joe, I think everybody in the United States knows you have the reputation for not running up to score. Now, this week, my brother's coming to the game, and uh, we'd like to feel good Sunday morning. <laughs> so would I, old Brian. <laughs> I want to be able to get out of bed on Sunday morning. I, I... This week, forget the image, and one other thing, another you know, shutout would be real nice. Yeah, I know, but don't, don't count on a shutout, Pat. That, <laughs> really, that, 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 and, and I, I wish I could tell you it was going to be easy, but it isn't. It's going to be a tough football game. I can't. I can't envision the kind of football game I, I think you're hoping for, O'Brien. Okay? So if you're going to be feeling good Saturday night, you may have to use some other means. <laughs> Which I think, you know, uh, you've had some practice with. Huh? <laughs> Looking at the squad, it was hard to be as pessimistic as the coach. The Nittany Lions are solid, quick, intelligent players, almost every one of them from Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, and New Jersey. Quarterback Chuck Fusina, an outstanding passer, was runner-up for the Heisman Trophy as best college player of the year. Matt Suey is a hard-driving running back whose father and grandfather were all Americans at Penn State. Defensive tackles Bruce Clark and Matt Mellon will be high professional draft picks. And so will place kicker Matt Barr, whose brother Chris went from Penn State to kick for the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> By Thursday, two days before the game, the team was settling down on the practice field, and Paterno began to see some bright spots as he looked at practice films. That's about the first time we've really, I've seen anybody get position on that guy. Well, Goodman's starting to look better. Yeah. Paterno was born in Brooklyn 51 years ago. He played quarterback for Brown in the late 40s. The late sports writer Stanley Woodard wrote of him then, he can't run and he can't pass, all he can do is think and win. He went to Penn State as assistant to the famous Rip Engel in 1950 and quickly became the team's main recruiter. Parents trusted him because he emphasized education rather than football. Offensive guard Eric Cunningham says he still has the touch. My folks were uh, genuinely pleased when I first met him. Uh, when I came down to make my decision, as they were telling me, uh, well, it's your choice. <laughs> Penn State's a place we like. We like Penn State, but it's your choice. It's the one you're going to have to make them live with. But I made the choice of Penn State, and I've enjoyed it. I know you're just getting started. You haven't hit anybody yet, Cody. <laughs> Paterno has had serious offers to become head coach of five NFL teams. One of them, the New England Patriots, offered him more than a quarter of a million dollars a year to move to Massachusetts. 
I've had a couple of people have offered me some money to coach some professional football teams, and I've, I've thought about it. Money is always kind of flattering when people want to give you more money than you know you're worth. Uh, but I've, I, I just like the, I like an academic atmosphere. I like State College. It's a lovely town, and it's a college town, even though it's a big institution. And I just happen, I'm happy here, and I don't see any reason to move just for money. Pennsylvania State University is the major, almost the only, industry of State College Pennsylvania. It's a handsome and disorganized town and campus in the middle of a valley. They could have filmed those 1930s college movies that had Jack Oakey and Toby Wing in them here. But what really makes the campus different is that they could still film a movie like that here. about a movie? Maybe with some updated haircuts and a slight whiff of the 70s in the air. How about a movie called Homecoming? Paterno says that football Saturdays should be fun for the players. On a bright Saturday afternoon in October, that seems to be the fans' philosophy, too. And for a lot of people, home game Saturdays at the college of their choice are still sort of the cement of their lives, the markers of their years. Pro football has nothing to match this phenomenon. Some of these people drove almost a thousand miles to drink their pre-game champagne and Bloody Marys and eat everything from hot dogs to roast turkey basted with beer. We couldn't find a student who had a bad word for Paterno all week. And we couldn't find a tailgater with a complaint about him this Saturday morning in Paterno Valley. Yes, we are. What about it when he retires and runs for governor? You think he'd make it? He'll win. <laughs> Paterno has strict rules about keeping his family away from reporters. He wants his five children to grow up as normal children, not celebrities. But we did run into his wife, Sue, running her own tailgate party. They met when he was assistant coach, and she was a co-ed at Penn State. Right. I looked for someone who was going to stay here. And, uh, well, the, coach, the coach says he is going to stay here. He told, right. told us in confidence right on camera. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That solves all the problems. Kelly runs for governor. <laughs> Can you cover? I'd everybody hustle. Let's start it off right. All right, go I get a kick sometimes out of people because they tease me a little bit when I say I want our kids to have some fun playing football. Well, the fun's playing on Saturday. It's no, it's no fun practicing. But when the game starts, you ought to feel, well, you paid a price, now you better enjoy it. And, and if you don't, why, I, I can't see a reason for playing. Paterno's fears about the team's concentration seem to be justified early in the game. Syracuse scored after intercepting a Fusina pass, and after 14 minutes, was only five points behind. Okay, you have to try you pull that down. You've got to try and get down, and you've got to try and get off on that. You've got to be able to lean back and you've got to be able to turn back. But with Fusina gaining 293 yards in the air and throwing three touchdown passes, Penn State pulled steadily ahead and won 45 to 15 with Christina and most of the other first stringers on the bench for most of the last quarter.
But that was before what was regarded as Penn State's last big test, Maryland. So Paterno, in the locker room, was not inclined to lull his big guys into a sense of security. We were not really sharp today. I think you all realize that. We're a little sloppy. We've got a lot of work to do. We were not as good as we have been. Right? And we got a long road to go now. we got four toughies coming up. we got to get better, right? we just got to keep getting better, keep getting better, keep getting better, right? Okay, now we have a lot to be thankful for. Let's say our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. After leading the team in prayer, Paterno couldn't hide his true feelings. Seven down, four to go! Okay, they took Maryland, 27 to 3. They took West Virginia, North Carolina State, and Pittsburgh. Tomorrow, they really get a chance to prove things. Against Alabama, the best of the rest of the country. Joe Paterno and his idea that football can be fun on Saturdays and football can be part of an education gets his chance to prove that football can be fun even on New Year's Day. If he's not number one, maybe he should be.